Hello, my name is Kathy, and I'm speaking to you on behalf of the Arkansas Small Business and Technology Development Center, or ASB TDC. Today, we're going to talk about business planning. A business plan can be used by both startup and existing businesses. It can serve multiple purposes, including planning for the future, fact-finding, and supporting a loan request. Often, the plan is used for the support of a loan request. But keep in mind that even if you don't need a loan, a well-thought-out business plan can be the difference in success and failure. A business plan typically contains the following five points. Products and services, market, industry, operations and management, and a budget. Your plan will include information about the following. The type of business including the products and services offered, location, owners, and legal structure, What's going on in the industry? Who are your customers and how will you market to them? And monthly revenue and expense projections with cash flow. Now, let's work through the following points as you prepare to create your business plan. Point one, your products and services. This section includes the answer to a key question. What are you selling and why? Here, you should describe the types of products or services you offer and identify what problem you're solving for your customers. It is critical to understand how you are creating value for them. If there's no value for your customer, they will have no reason to buy from you. When deciding what products and services to offer, it's also important to think about what you do best. This is your core competency. It is often tempting to offer too many products or services but this can increase cost and confuse customers rather than increasing sales. Next, let's discuss where customers can buy your products and services. What's the location of the business? Are you an online-only business or do you need a brick and mortar location? If so, you should not only identify the location but also discuss why this is a good place for your business. Point two, your market. Without customers, you cannot have a business. Yet many companies know next to nothing about the people or businesses that purchase their products or services. This can make or break your business, so don't rush this step. As you develop your business plan, it is important to understand your target market and how best to reach that market. What will your customer look like? For example, does your customer fit a certain age range, income range, or lifestyle segment? Where are they located? What is their motivation for buying your product or service? Think about these things and include this in your business plan. This is time well spent. Once you've defined your target customer, you should outline your plans to market to them. A common mistake is to be too generic. For example, we see business plans that say something like, the business will use social media and word of mouth to promote the business. This is not near enough detail. Skimping on the marketing plan is not a path to success. As we know, social media is a low-cost vehicle to market your business. With that said, it is still important to develop a plan to utilize social media in the most effective way. You must be strategic. There isn't enough time or money to be everywhere. Trends in your target demographic can help you determine the best option for social media. For example, do your customers frequent Facebook or is TikTok the most popular platform among your target market? It will be important to answer these questions as part of your research so your marketing budget can be directed at the most effective options for the company. Point three, the industry. As a business owner, you must know your industry. Regularly reviewing industry trade journals, publications, and websites is a good idea. Other possible sources of information are national or regional trade associations for your type of business. As you write your plan, you should consult these industry resources to learn as much as you can. Your plan should include information about your industry that is most relevant to your business. Include information about trends, problems facing businesses in your industry, along with potential opportunities. However, don't just write these things in your plan. Spend time thinking about how you can use this information to make strategic decisions for your business and discuss it. Point four, operations and management. This section details the day-to-day -day operations for effectively operating the business. It illustrates to investors and lenders 
that you know how to run your business and deliver your product or service. One of the most critical yet most intangible requirements for a successful business is the management skill to control and direct the business once it is operating. In your business plan, you should discuss the key operational and management issues that are relevant to your business. Examples include, what is the owner's role in business operations? Identify the number of employees required, their basic job functions, and their wages. How and when do customers pay? And for existing businesses, what have you learned about operating your business successfully? Point five, your budget. One of the most important yet challenging sections of your business is the financial section. This is where you determine and demonstrate that your business is feasible and will make money. It should include a breakdown of the project cost, 12 month operating budget or income statement projection, and a cash flow projection. The total cost of the project and feasibility are critical components of the business plan and helps the owner determine if the project is a go or no go in its current form. The monthly budget and cash flow projection can act as a feasibility study, allowing the business owner to determine cash coming into and going out of the business. When the cash flow statement is completed, this allows the owner to determine how much cash will be needed at certain times of the year to meet expense requirements while also meeting debt payments. These numbers assist in determining the total project cost, including any working capital needed to fund seasonality or other fluctuations in business. Requesting financing. If you are using the, your business plan to request financing, there are several things that your prospective lender will need to know in order to make a decision. Financial institutions typically expect the owner to have skin in the game by investing some personal funds in the business. This capital usually needs to be from the owner and not borrowed from another source. In other words, startups should not expect to be able to borrow 100% of the total project cost. Typically, the owner can expect to contribute around 20%. Using a simple example, if the project cost including equipment, inventory, and working capital is $100,000 and the financial institution requires a 20% owner contribution, the owner will need to contribute $20,000 to the project. The loan amount will be $80,000 and the lender will expect the loan amount to be collateralized by the owner. This collateral can include business assets and typically also requires additional personal assets from the business owner. These personal assets can include equity in land, home, or other tangible assets. Unfortunately, obtaining a grant is unlikely. Typically, most new business owners must use a combination of personal resources and loans. Summary. Now let's talk about writing a summary for the business plan. The summary customarily appears at the beginning of your completed business plan. However, you will need information from the rest of the plan in order to write it. So composing the summary is your last step. This section should be concise. The rest of your business plan gives the details. This section offers highlights of what to expect from the rest of the document. In the summary, you should provide a list of owners and the various ownership percentages if there's more than one owner. The legal structure of the business should be identified as well. If you are using the plan to seek financing, you should also include an overview of your project by providing the following. What is the total cost to start or expand your business? Include the amounts needed for equipment, inventory, furniture, fixtures, supplies, startup related expenses, buildings or improvements, and working capital. How much money are you contributing towards the total project costs? How much are you trying to borrow? And what are you offering as collateral for your loan? Supporting documents. As you wrap up your business plan, make sure to include any documents that may be useful to you or your lender. These could include items such as owner's resumes, owner's personal financial statements, business financial statements and tax returns for existing businesses, list of collateral, price quotes and estimates for planned large purchases, or sample marketing pieces. What's next? As you can see, developing a good and useful business plan can take a lot of work. 
Unfortunately, many people approach business planning like completing a homework assignment and focus on getting it done to cross it off the list. Remember that the business plan is where you lay out the critical aspects of your business and figure out how those things all work together so you can make a profit. The real value of a business plan isn't the final document. Rather, it is the process you go through strategizing about key aspects of a business to make it successful. If you are ready to move forward now, start drafting your business plan. Use the business plan outline and sample on our website at asbtdc.org. ASBTDC also offers educational events on starting a business and creating a business plan. The event schedule is also on our website. Once you have a draft plan, ASBTDC staff can review it and provide feedback. We're also available to answer your questions. Just reach out to us at asbtdc.org. At ASBTDC, we look forward to working with you throughout your entrepreneurial journey.